Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Like, subscribe, and share with your fellow Denarian friends. To help support our channel we now accept tips using the blockchain-based Brave Browser and BAT tokens. It makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. To those of you that made a contribution, I sincerely thank you very much. If you have not done so yet, pick up your free trial copy of the Currency Exchange Planner and check out the awesome new Currency Exchange Planner Companion, voted the number one exchange planner in the Dinar community. Both the links to the powerful secure blockchain Brave browser as well as the Currency Exchange Planner are below this video. First article of interest for today. Washington reveals details of Pompeo's contact with the Prime Minister designate. The U.S. State Department, on Monday, February 24, 2020, revealed the details of the phone call made by U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to the Prime Minister of Iraq, Mohammad Tafiq Alawi. The ministry said in a statement obtained, Baghdad today, that Pompeo made a phone call to the designated Iraqi Prime Minister, Mohammad Tafiq Alawi, to reaffirm the United States' permanent commitment to a strong, prosperous and sovereign Iraq. Pompeo welcomed, according to the statement, the Prime Minister designate pledged to holderly elections in order to support the democratic system in Iraq. Pompeo urged the new Iraqi Prime Minister to resolve differences with Kurdish and Sunni political leaders to ensure the success of his government in carrying out the basic tasks the statement said. Stressing that Iraq is committed to protecting U.S. diplomats, coalition forces, and their facilities. Pompeo and Alawi reviewed the movement of protests, especially the imperative of the next government, to put an end to the killing of protesters, to seek justice for the dead and wounded, and to deal with their legitimate grievances, the foreign statement added. She noted that Foreign Minister Pompeo and the Prime Minister designate agreed on the importance of initiating reforms that would enable the government to provide a decent life, prosperity, and security for the Iraqi people. Yesterday, the office of the Iraqi Prime Minister revealed that the official, Mohammad Tafiq Alawi, had received a phone call from the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. The Prime Minister designate Mohammad Tafiq Alawi received a phone call from U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and Pompeo congratulated him on the occasion of assigning the position of Prime Minister, the office said in a statement received, Baghdad today, wishing him success and success in his new duties, in turn. Mr. Alawi thanked the Foreign Minister for calling. The statement added, during the call, a review of the latest political developments at the regional and international levels was made, stressing the need for coordination and joint action, and the support of the United States of America to Iraq in various fields in order to preserve the sovereignty of Iraq and achieve economic prosperity and activate cooperation frameworks between the two countries. Next article of interest. A crisis besieging a law we after the dissolution of his government's coalition and parliament. The coalition that was formed to support Iraqi Prime Minister-designate Mohammad Alawi is close, after growing signs of the difficulty in passing his cabinet cabinet, during the session called by the resigned Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi, and was supposed to be held today, Monday. However, the differences between the political blocs prompted to be postponed to Wednesday, according to the first deputy speaker of the Iraqi parliament, Hassan al Kabi. Parliamentary sources told Al Arab correspondent in Baghdad that the date of the session is not yet confirmed, after some political parties retracted Alawi's support, after I announced his support for him earlier. Among the parties that appear to have abandoned Alawi, the Asa'ibal al Haq movement, which is close to Iran, led by Kay Khazali, which has 15 seats in the Iraqi parliament and the support that Sunni businessman Ka Amis al Anjar provided to the new booth is in doubt, after it was confirmed it is to him that his Kurdish friend, Masoud Barzani, will not allow his party to participate in the new government, after the person charged with forming it refrained from assigning bags to Kurdish candidates. By Sunday, the list of supporters of Alawi's government included only 54 deputies, 
who make up the Siren Block sponsored by Shiite cleric Miqtada al-Sadr, and about 30 out of 52 deputies in Hadi al-Amir's Fatah Block, which is close to Iran. And given that the Iraqi parliament consists of 329 deputies, the number of deputies supporting Alawi does not constitute any majority of him able to pass. 84 of the 329 representatives announced confidence in the government of Muhammad Alawi. The compolitical atmosphere in Baghdad on Sunday provided a clear picture of the reality of the crisis surrounding the ministerial cabinet that the Prime Minister designated is preparing to present to Parliament, as no instructions were issued regarding holding an extraordinary session of the House of Representatives. What added to the belief about the magnitude of the crisis? Prime Minister-designate Mohammad Alawi postponed the process of disclosing deputies to the members of his new cabinet until hours before the supposed session, Wednesday, which confirms that it has been subject to or is subject to continuous changes. Alawi received many advice, regarding the necessity of his conducting a new path, after the controversy raised by his old path based on the idea of forming a government that does not include representatives of political parties which have the right to give him confidence or to drop him in parliament. A source close to the prime minister designate told Al Arab that Allah we wants to keep his close circle away from any party's interference in his options to occupy ministerial portfolios. He pointed out that allowing this circle to be broken to enter one political party means necessarily breaking it with everyone and all of them enter the cycle of negotiations to form the new government. And the source added that a law we wanted from the start to form his government without consultations with the political parties that approved his assignment to this task, because he will be responsible to the parliament that these forces control, and it can, through parliament, hold him accountable for his failure, if it happens. But the Iraqi political reality cannot bear the dreams of the prime minister designate of a government that is not dominated by the parties especially since the names that leaked as part of the new cab options are not completely independent of the partisan influences, although some of them knew about political independence recently. Observers say that there is more than one scenario waiting for Prime Minister-designate Mohammad Tafiq Alawi, the first scenarios for the passage of his booth as he prepared it, using street pressure on political parties, and the second passing through amendments that satisfy the opposition Shiite. Sunni and Kurdish parties, which means a return to the political mechanisms that the Iraqi street pretends against five months ago. As for the third scenario, Alawi is apologizing for completing his mission and starting a new process to search for a consensual candidate that satisfies all parties, while not provoking the demonstrators stationed in the squares in Baghdad and a number of provinces. However, this matter may threaten to temporarily transfer the powers of the Prime Minister to the President of the Republic, according to the Constitution, in case the resigned Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi fulfills his threat not to stay in office for more than 30 days devoted to forming the new government. The Arabs. Next article of interest. After returning to the blacklist. What are Iran's options to prevent the collapse of its economy? There was much talk in Iran shortly after the financial working group missed Tehran on the blacklist about ways to contain its negative repercussions on the national economy. What are the options available to Tehran to prevent the collapse of its national economy? And less than 24 hours after the U.S. Treasury imposed sanctions on five officials of Iran's Guardian Council to deny thousands of candidates contesting the legislative race. The Financial Action Task Force on Anti-Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing, FATF, has put Iran back on the blacklist. While Iran condemned in the words of its foreign ministry spokesman Abbas Musavi, and described it as, because of the Saudi, American and Zionist influence in controlling international mechanisms and politicizing its decisions, the governor of the Iranian central bank, Abdel Nasser Hamidi, played down the importance of his country being included again in the blacklist. The Iranian official considered that the international group's action will not cause any problem for Iranian foreign trade or the exchange rate, 
and attributed the reason for this to the fact that the Iranian financial economic system managed to establish its relations with the world outside the framework of FATF in light of the unfair U.S. sanctions, he said. After nearly six years spent in Iran under the blacklist, the financial working group temporarily suspended sanctions in 2016 after Tehran signed the nuclear agreement with the six-party group, one plus five, and mortgaged its final exit by accepting all the prevailing laws and decisions of the international working group. In light of the growing fears in Iran of the repercussions of reimposing countermeasures that would lead to the zeroing of foreign investment and stopping the activities of national companies abroad and the failure of international financial institutions to deal with the Iranian banking network, we asked a question about the options available to Tehran to prevent the collapse of its economy to the researcher the Iranian in political economy, Mohammad Islami. There is no new solution in Iran after its return to the blacklist, according to the Iranian researcher, who believes that there is no need to search for new options to prevent the deterioration of the Iranian economy, which overcame U.S. sanctions, but it does not negate the country's economy being affected relatively after the recent financial action group. In his speech to Al Jazeera Net, an Islamist considered that the continuation of the economic and trade relations approach that Iran has established so far with some other countries is the first and easiest option to nullify the effect of the blacklist sanctions, stressing that there are countries that do not originally believe in the policy of sanctions, and that circumventing them does not constitute a violation of international laws. He added, the U.S. sanctions have affected many Iranian sectors during the past two years, and there are no official relations between the Iranian banking network and its international counterparts. The same spokesman explained that Tehran's financial relations were not broken with the world as Washington wanted them to, and this is what constitutes the second option to prevent the deterioration of the national economy. As for circumventing the sanctions, it is the third option according to an Islamist, who expressed his conviction of the efficacy of all means that Tehran has pursued during the past period to thwart the policy of extreme U.S. sanctions aimed at zeroing Iranian oil exports and cutting Tehran's revenues from hard currency. The Iranian deputy oil minister Amir Hussein Zamani revealed a new way to sell oil and circumvent U.S. sanctions by selling it in the gray market without going into details. He said in a press statement that Iran has mobilized all of its resources to sell oil in this market and bypass the sanctions that we consider illegal. Financial treaties and the Russian swift. As for the newspaper, Jim Jim, it presented a fourth option under the title, Circumventing, FATF, via monetary treaties, and the Iranian authorities demanded to conclude bilateral or multilateral financial treaties with other countries stressing that some neighboring countries including Russia, Turkey and Pakistan have previously you have submitted proposals to conclude such agreements. According to the newspaper, the last option will not be effective unless the parties to trade and financial treaties launch a system of transfers between them to replace the global system of SWIFT for financial exchange between them. And the Institute of Financial and Banking Studies of the Central Bank of Iran has announced a decision to join the National Financial Electronic Communications System in the Russian SWIFT, with the aim of combating the U.S. banking ban on the global SWIFT system. As for the researcher at the Contemporary History Foundation for Studies, Reza Hajj, he suggested launching a common currency between Iran and its allies for financial exchanges between them similar to the euro, in addition to giving them more attention in digital currencies. He believed that the elements of transit from the hegemony of the American dollar are available in China, Russia and Iran, the axis of resistance rings, and even in Latin America, as well as the European desire to strengthen the euro. In 2016, Moscow launched a system of financial communication similar to the global system of transfers, SWIFT, after the U.S. Treasury threatened to impose a new batch of financial sanctions that prevented Russian banks and companies from using the global SWIFT, which Tehran welcomed and announced its joining at a later time. Next article of interest. Although CV, Chinese, 
Americans have discovered a vaccine for treatment before everyone else and will soon distribute it for free. A U.S. company with genetic engineering, headquartered in Texas, has announced its success in producing a new vaccine for the new CV. The company completed the vaccine this week, and the next step is to test it on animals, in preparation for obtaining a permit from the U.S. government, and to use it widely, said CEO of Griffix Price in a statement carried by American media. Price revealed that, the common way to produce a vaccine is to use a live or dead copy of the actual virus, and work to provide the body with immunity against it, as happens in the influenza vaccine, for example, but the scientists who produced the new vaccine in Griffex, used another technique is the vaccines for virus gland carriers, this means that the vaccine is genetically engineered. Fox Business pointed out that gland virus viruses are widely used against infectious diseases and cancers. Price said, Griffex will distribute the vaccine free of charge to countries with HIV infections, as soon as the U.S. government agrees to use the vaccine. He explained that scientists specialized in his company's laboratories developed the vaccine based on a contract worth $18.9 million concluded with the National Institute of Health and Infectious Diseases of the National Institute of Health in September 2019, in an attempt to combat infectious diseases. The latest statistics on the number of people affected by the CV around the world reached 78,959 people infected with the virus, of whom 2,465 people died, and 23,094 people recovered. Hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more articles of interest are posted. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter for all of today's articles of interest. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded Currency Exchange Planner and check out the new Currency Exchange Planner Companion before you leave. Use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails and they boot up the new quantum financial system on the blockchain. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be too late. The program is made so everyone can afford to save in gold by offering it one gram at a time. Start saving in a real true asset like gold, it's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. Why do you think all the central banks are loading up on gold lately, and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video, go check them out. Knowledge is power. Using that newfound knowledge is powerful. Over and out, for now, the Dinarian.